The best wines in Washington just might come from a warehouse. WSJ wine columnist Letty Teague is back from Woodenville, Washington, just outside of Seattle. She joins us with her favorite bottles the tiny city has to offer. Letty, thanks for being uh, here. Good to be here. So I would not have considered north of Seattle as a great wine producing region. Why are so many wineries popping up around there? You know, um, it has to do with um, certainly the proximity to Seattle is key, um, but the fact that, that um, this warehouse district is there has a lot to do with the Chateau St. Michel, um, which is the, the biggest winery in, in Washington State, um, their presence, and the fact that, that this, this disconnect is actually a well-established one where you have the, the vineyards in the eastern half of Washington, and you have the, pop, the large you know, population in the western half, and, um, and a lot of the winemaking talent. So there's, there's just been this back and forth for, for quite some time. So what are some of the characteristics you're seeing out of the wines that are coming out of that little area? Oh, well, we know there are about 50 uh, wineries and tasting rooms there, and, and because, you know, it's kind of the blessing and the curse of Washington is that they do a lot of things really well. So they're, and, and so they're making everything that you can possibly imagine in terms of grapes. They're making Cabernet and Syrah, and they're also making Tempranillo, and they're making Grunewald Liner, and they're making Chardonnay, and they're making Sauvignon, you know, so it's like they can do all these things really well. So there's like, that's the great news, and the bad news is, unlike Oregon, say, to the south, which everyone says, ah, Oregon Pinot Noir, but in Washington, it's like, well, they do everything. So, you know, that's the good news and the bad news. And know? it sounded like yeah. you actually had a lot of favorites, maybe because they do everything. We're going to try one in a second, but right. tell me about a couple of the other ones you right. tried that you would right. definitely sip again. Well, I was there looking at some of the new talent, you know, and then the new guys that are actually interestingly moving into the, the old warehouse spaces that were vacated by the first generation of winemakers. So, um, for example, um, uh, Michael Savage, whose wine we're, we've, we have here, the Chardonnay here, is, is one of them. Um, Kevin White is another one of the young winemakers. Um, you know, uh, Chris Peterson at Avinia, you know, and, and there's so many, and there's so many guys that some of them still have their daytime jobs, some of them have part-time jobs, you know, because it's, and it's easy thing to do when you're working out of a warehouse, you know, and you're buying grapes, so you can, you know, do it sort of on a part-time basis. Um, and they're doing, like, for example, this, this wine that we're about to taste is a uh, Chardonnay from a cool climate region in, called uh, um, uh, Columbia Gorge, which is down, you know, south in the, actually on the western side, which a lot of people don't know much about. And, you know, he's just, it's, it's, a, it's a really bright, uh, clean style, almost Chablis-like, you know, which is, which is a, a marvelous thing because it's, it's, you know, there's a lot of Chardonnay in the world, but not a lot of distinctive Chardonnay. All right, let's not waste any more okay. time. Let's try it. Oh, cheers. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. That is a really nice Chardonnay. It's very refreshing and not as, mm -hmm. as heavy as some of the other Yeah, it has have. a really nice minerality and real vivacity to it. All know. right, great. Washington Wines, who knew? Mm -hmm. Letty, thanks very much for joining us. My pleasure.